Using OneDrive and SharePoint to host your company data is perfect for most businesses, but it's not the right solution for every business. In this video, we're going to go over the major problems that you might have using OneDrive and SharePoint. And more importantly, we're going to talk about the alternatives. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards and my business helps clients all over the world with their Microsoft 365 and the cybersecurity. So if you've got time, why don't you check out 365gearsystem.com? So when clients approach us wanting to move their data to the cloud, we almost always recommend using OneDrive and SharePoint to host the company data. These platforms come included with Microsoft 365. So you pay your subscription and you get lots of free cloud storage using OneDrive and SharePoint. For most businesses, it makes perfect sense but it doesn't work for every business. So what businesses should consider not using OneDrive and SharePoint and what problems will they have? The first reason why you wouldn't use OneDrive and SharePoint is if you have long file paths. So what are long file paths? Well, your business might have quite a complex file structure. You might have folders nested inside folders, nested inside folders. The OneDrive and SharePoint maximum file path must not exceed 400 characters. So if you've got lots of documents at the end of lots of folder paths and it exceeds 400 characters, then the sync tool just won't work and you might end up losing data. Now, as a real world example, we once took over the IT support for an accounting firm and an IT company had moved them to OneDrive and SharePoint without proper due diligence on their file paths. The end result well, it was a bit of a mess. Lots of computers weren't syncing and they were losing data left, right and center. So if you've got a complex file structure, you've either got to sort that out prior to moving to SharePoint or OneDrive or use a different system altogether. Now the second reason why your business wouldn't use OneDrive or SharePoint is if you deal with large files. So common industries here, you've got architects with CAD drawings, you've got designers with Photoshop files. Large files, again, don't synchronize very well with the OneDrive synchronization tool, especially if you've got slow internet connections. That will just end up causing frustration for all of your team. The third reason why OneDrive or SharePoint might not be a good fit for your business is if you've got too much data. Now, SharePoint gives you one terabyte of storage per organization. You also then get 10 gigabytes of storage per licensed user. So if we look at that in real life terms, you've got 20 users. You'll get one terabyte because you've got a business and then you'll get 10 gigabytes per user times 20. So you get 200 gigabytes in extra storage. So that'll give you a grand total of 1.2 terabytes of data. Now that might be okay for most businesses, but for some businesses, it might not be enough. So in that scenario, you can go to Microsoft and buy more data for your SharePoint, but it's quite expensive. It ends up being about 18 pence per gigabyte extra. So let's look at another example. Again, you've got 20 users in your business, so you'll get 1.2 terabytes of SharePoint data included, but you've got five terabytes of data altogether. So you've got to buy another 3.8 terabytes of extra storage per month. Now, if you look at that at 18 pence per gigabyte, it's gonna cost you a whopping 684 pounds extra per month. That's a lot of money. The fourth reason why OneDrive or SharePoint might not work for you is if you want to synchronize too many files to your local computer. Of course, the system is built using a synchronization tool. And if you want to synchronize more than 300,000 files, it's not gonna work. The synchronization tool will fall over. So there are the four main reasons why OneDrive or SharePoint might not work for your business. If you're like 90% of business that we look after, it'll be just fine. But what if you fall into the other 10% of customers and it's not going to work for you? What are your options? The first alternative you have is to use an alternative cloud product, something like Dropbox or Box. 
something that doesn't have the same limitations as OneDrive and SharePoint. Be cautious here though, if I was going down the Dropbox route, you've got to avoid the free products and even the entry level products. You've got to go for the product that has the most security. If I was going to go down the Dropbox route, I'd be choosing the one at £18 per user per month. One with the highest level of security and unlimited storage. If we compare that to our fictitious 20 user company, if everybody had the £18 per user per month Dropbox plan, it would be £360 per user per month. Unlimited storage, half the price of Microsoft. Now the second alternative is to use something called Azure Files. Now a great piece of advice that I give to customers is to use as few providers as possible. So if you want to keep all your data within the Microsoft ecosystem, then you should check out using Azure Files. Using Azure Files is the nearest experience that you'll get to having a server in your office. You'll access Azure Files using a map drive and it'll look really familiar, but all of the data is actually in the cloud. Again, looking at pricing, if your business had 200 gigabytes of data using Azure Files, it might cost you about £30 per month. Very reasonable. Now the fourth alternative is to continue to use your files and folders on the same network and you've got kind of two options within this. Firstly, your business could choose to have a server in your office. I know it's 2023 and everybody talks about cloud computing, but for some businesses hosting a server in their office is the best and most cost effective way to set up their IT. Or, if you didn't want to do that, you could have something called a virtual desktop where you moved everything into the cloud, your servers and your desktops. So you would log on to a desktop that was in the cloud and you would access your files and folders almost locally, but the local network is now in the cloud. So you wouldn't have to synchronize any data. So you could have large data, you could have complex file systems and it would still work. So there are four main alternatives to using OneDrive and SharePoint. And perhaps there's a fifth one too. You could use a mix of all the alternatives that I've mentioned. You might have lots of data that's just used for archiving. So you could archive all that away into Azure files and then use OneDrive and SharePoint for your live data. There's plenty of options. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you again soon.